Hi everyone, Christina here. Now in this video tutorial, I'm gonna be going over some beginner tips and tricks that you can use with your Ohmtec fiber laser. Now keep in mind, I am by no means a fiber expert. I am pretty much a beginner at this. Um, so a lot of it has just been through trial and error, but I hope that some of these tips and tricks can help you if you are also starting out. Yeah, uh, let's jump on in and get started. So for people who want to know, this is my fiber. Now I call this the rolly cart version because it is a rolly cart. I do have mine still on the uh, palette that it came with, but this is my fiber. So this is what I'm going to be showing in the video. Now I do have the rotary attachment because I do a lot of powder coated mugs. The safety glasses, you always want to make sure you're wearing when you're using your fiber. I have my little level here when I'm doing mugs on the rotary so I know that the mug is level and got my laptop here. I don't use the foot pedal. Some people use the foot pedal. So I also have here is the, um, this is what you use to adjust the focal height. Now I do have mine marked so you can see this is where I usually keep like things that are really flat that I put here. And then I have another one up here, which is where I would put like a mug or something if it were on the rotary. So I do keep those marked and I will explain into detail in this video what exactly I'm doing. And then I keep all my fiber supplies in the drawer along with all my tests. It's a little bit messy, but this is, this is why I got the rolly cart version in the first place. So I could put my stuff in here and keep it separate from all my CO2 supplies. So same thing within here, I have storage also mention when I'm running powder coated jobs I have this little fan that I use I usually just like hook it up here because I don't have an exhaust system for the fiber yet but hopefully in the future I will have something set up so that will be a video all on its own let me go over some of the basics before we dive into the EasyCAD program first off I'm gonna power up my machine by clicking these three buttons over here we have our little red dot pointer. Now I personally don't really use this because I kind of find it annoying, but you can use it to get an idea of where your design is gonna be on your little tray. So you can use it if you want to. Let's go over the focal height. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I do keep mine marked. Um, the green mark is what I use when I'm doing flat objects. The black mark is what I'm using when I'm doing the rotary. To adjust it, you just spin this little tip up here. And always, we want our safety glasses on before we're getting into any of this fiber work. Here's our main screen area that we have. I'm just going to draw a plain circle and show you what happens if I were to mark it on this piece of aluminum that I have. And here we have our circle and I am just going to come over here, click light so I know the location. Mind you, I am using a aluminum business card for the sample in here. and then I'm gonna click mark. As we can see, it is just doing the outline of that circle. Now, if we want to fill in the circle, we're gonna have to make sure that we're gonna hatch it. So we're gonna come over here to the hatch panel. Here with the hatch panel, you have some options. I'm just gonna use the default setting and click mark. And if you come over here, you will see on the upper right, we have our mark parameter and there's a bunch of different color blocks. You have, you know, one default, two default, etc. These are actually your layers. So you can set different settings and different layers to show if you want to. If you have multiple designs on your artboard, you might want to do different layers. So again, that is up to your choosing. I don't really work with them, so I'm not really gonna talk about them much in this video, but I did wanna point it out just in case it's something you would like to further research. Now coming over to this panel, we have our library and you can create your own. You can you know, download them online. I actually purchased this one from another creator and I'm just gonna show you how different settings impact how your design looks depending on the material that you're using. So here we have a different setting. It's no longer the default setting. I'm using a setting from the library and check out the difference here. So I'm gonna light it just like I did with the other one so I know the location's okay. And then I'm gonna click mark. And 
Awesome, so to me, those two look pretty similar. Let's try one of the other aluminum settings that I have here. So coming back over to the library, I'm gonna select another setting and then I'm going to mark it. And you can see that smoke coming up. So this is why it's always good to have some kind of fan or something blowing it away from your face in your direction, just so you're not breathing that in. If you have an exhaust, that's even better. As you can see, this one is a lot more silver than the other one. So let's continue with the settings and see how each circle looks differently. All right, so I'm gonna try another setting now. And this one looks a little bit more ivory, so that's interesting. Now I'm gonna try the final setting that I have for the aluminum and see how that one goes. I do suggest if you are learning and starting out, the aluminum business cards are a fantastic product to use. They're relatively inexpensive and they're great as you're learning your focal height and your dialing in your settings. So I do suggest definitely looking at these and I will include a link to the ones that I purchased. Check this out. Look at how different each setting looks. And like I said before, a lot of it is trial and error. So you wanna make sure that if you're going through and you're, you know, you have a new material, especially if you're like trying out new things, I always suggest trying to buy in bulk so you can learn the materials that you have. All right, moving on, I'm gonna show you an example on a different material, stainless steel blanks. Now, when it comes to stainless steel, depending on your design, at least from my experience, Sometimes when you have small details and you try to do a deep engrave, it can all become fuzzy and it, just, it doesn't look nice. So you do want to play with your settings. You do want to try and figure out what works best for you and your machine and the material that you have. Now you do want to be careful if you are doing like a really deep engrave, that metal can get really, really hot. This was just a very simple one, so I'm not too worried about it, but the longer you're engraving with the fiber, the hotter it will get. So here we have one, it's pretty dark, I'm happy with that. So for cleaning these up, I prefer LA Awesome. I'm just using a paper towel. You can use a magic eraser. I've seen people use paint brushes and uh, toothbrushes to scrub, but check this out. In this particular engrave, there are a lot of lines. And from my experience, that could be caused by a couple different things. One is you could have some debris in your lens. The second is you could have some type of issue with your hatching. And I ran into this a couple times where it was just looking really funny. I removed the hatch, redid it, and it worked fine. But if you're noticing a lot of lines in your work, chances are something isn't set right. And like, look at that detail. Like, look at those lines. So this is what I'm talking about. And if, yeah, this is the uh, same thing. So I'm gonna go check the lens and see if there's something going on up there that's causing this issue. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unscrew it. Here we go. That's what it looks like. Here we go. I'm just gonna examine it and see if I see anything. And you can see there is like a little fiber or a hair or something right there. So I'm gonna try and clean that up and see if that solves the issue. So I'm using this with a microfiber towel that I have. It's the same thing that I use on my CO2 mirrors and the lens. So I'm just gonna gently clean it up, get that fiber off, it does come right off, so that's good. Now another point I do wanna mention from trial and error is if you're working with a lot of stainless steel stamping blanks, they are known to scratch. I did try some techniques that some people recommended where there are special types of sandpaper grits meant for stainless steel, and I was not happy with the results. And here is an example of one of my test projects here. And as you can see, it just, not loving it, not loving it at all. Now for probably my biggest tip, 
and the one that kind of took me the longest to figure out is if you're noticing as you're doing an engrave and your engrave is not lining up with where the light actually is and when i say light it's when you're lighting the you're lighting the file before you actually mark it this is how you can go in and adjust that so if you come over here it's actually at the bottom it's not in any of the property panels to adjust the actual light when you're lighting a job which is going to show the outline of your design or your shape you see it says param f3 you're going to want to click on that and it's going to bring up a panel and i really don't touch anything in this panel i just you know kind of zoom through but what you're interested in finding here is it's under the other if you come over to other you'll see it says red light pointer so if you click on the button that says red light pointer this is going to give you some measurements now you're going to need to figure out the measurements depending on the location uh, and how far the light is from the actual engrave so what i suggest doing is when you're engraving something light the job engrave the job and then put the light on after the engrave and see how far off it is and then come into these settings and play around. So in my case, what I had to adjust to get my light to actually line up with the mark or the engrave is I had to adjust the offset pose X, which is the offset position X and the offset position Y. And what I did was just adjust it in very small increments to get it to line up. And then you're gonna wanna engrave the job again and just kind of go from there, test it out. That is why I suggest using something like the cheaper aluminum business cards as you're learning this stuff because you can actually get, you know, quite a few tests done on one little card. And that's exactly what I did in this case. So it might be different from your machine than it is to my machine, but this is what I found the most helpful. Mm -hmm.